the opposition leader Juan Guaido declared himself an interim president, a split is emerging in the international community. Vladimir Putin has declared a destructive external influence breaks all the norms of international law, but the US president has fully backed the opposition and isn't ruling out possible military action. Are you considering a military option for Venezuela? We're not considering anything, but all options are on the table. Does that mean you're considering those? Which is all options, always. All options are on the table. I've decided to break diplomatic and political ties with the imperialist government of the United States. I will sign a diplomatic note giving all diplomatic and consular personnel of the United States and Venezuela 72 hours to leave the country. All eyes are on the Venezuelan crisis. Here in Davos, Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez is holding talks on the issue with his Latin American counterparts on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum. The Spanish government said it does not consider Maduro to be a legitimate president. A phone call with the Venezuelan opposition has been on the books. The irony is that just days ago his own government denounced statements made by the interior minister of Italy who expressed hope that the French people could free themselves from Macron. Turning to reaction from Latin America, shortly after Venezuela's opposition leader Juan Guido declared himself the interim president, on Wednesday a handful of Washington's usual allies came on board, Brazil, Argentina and Chile to name a few. However, Mexico, Cuba and Bolivia refused to follow suit. Other countries expressed criticism to external interference through support of the opposition. China among them, a crucial partner to oil-rich Venezuela in gold mining and energy production. China always maintains the principle of non-interference in the internal affairs of other countries, opposing external intervention in Venezuelan domestic affairs. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov expressed alarm at U.S. talk of a possible military option. We can see another intrusion into a sovereign country's politics. As you know, there have been several attempts to oust Nicolas Maduro. The fact that the U.S. and a number of other countries, particularly in the region, immediately recognized the self-proclaimed president means they had a hand in the creation of competing leaderships. This can lead to chaos and a serious destabilization in the internal political situation. The Venezuelan military have said they will support Nicolas Maduro and defend the country's sovereignty and constitution. We, the military, educated, disciplined and trained to the highest values of the core, inspired by the values of independence, peace and common good, proclaim loyalty and absolute subordination to Nicolas Maduro, the constitutional president of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. My Commander-in-Chief, you can count on our support in your daily effort to achieve stability and strengthen our beloved homeland. There's plenty of different interests at play when it comes to this crisis, and international reaction may play a major role in the way this crisis unfolds. Reporting from Davos in Switzerland, Anastasia Cherkina for RT. European Parliament member Javier Cuso says that Washington should remember it can't act against the UN and international law. We've been hearing Trump saying he is considering the possibility of military intervention for some time already. That's why we must be standing against military intervention, which will be illegal. The U.S. can't go against the U.N. and in international law and start that destructive intervention. We have already seen what happened in Iraq. Over a million people died and a sovereign country was destroyed. That's why we should be hoping for the determination of the Venezuelan people to avert the intervention. It's crucial to warn the U.S. that they can act above the law and it's not for them to decide who will make the rules in this or that country. Caracas has been swamped with both anti-government protests and rallies in support of President Maduro. At some of the demonstrations there have been explosions, gunfire and clashes. While the French president has thrown his backing behind the Venezuelan opposition.
After the illegal election of Nicolas Maduro in May 2018, Europe supports the restoration of democracy. I salute the courage of the hundreds of thousands of Venezuelans who are marching for their freedom. I side with the millions of Frenchmen who are complaining about a president who is harming the French people. I condemn any acts of hooliganism and violence, without exceptions. For me, these remarks raise certain questions. Do they help the Italian people? Do they contribute to the well-being of the Italian people, which should be the preoccupation of the Italian government? I don't believe so. Do they change anything in the French political situation? I don't believe so either. So I think these are useless remarks, and I won't say more about them, as of course they are unfriendly. It's called diplomacy. Macron wants to have a good image abroad, even though in France he's seen in a bad light, and his popularity has fallen since the Yellow West protest. He wants to tighten the laws here against demonstrators. It's sort of a double standard. He supports such movements abroad, but we are not being taken into consideration. I don't know why Macron bothers to make such comments if he's not listening to us at the same time. Macron speaks of democracy, but the democracy he has here is a plutocracy, the democracy of the rich. Independent journalist and political analyst Robert Harness believes the Yellow Vest movement won't be quick to praise Macron's words. It is the most absurd statement when for the last 10 weeks we've had people rioting all over the place in France. It's a very strange thing to have said. I don't think it will go down very well in the political class. I don't think they will think it was a very clever thing to have said, bearing in mind that, as we have both said, that France has a serious problem with public order itself. I'm sure he will be violently criticized in France. I think people will be very angry. And he's been bitterly criticized already by the Spaniards who say there was no need to talk like that. What would he say if the Russians back the, the the yellow jackets and said that they recognized one of them as the president of France. I mean, it's ludicrous. You just cannot believe that these people are unable to look in the mirror and see how ludicrous their statements are.